morning, Florida governor and Republican presidential candidate Ron DeSantis is giving his most direct comments yet against Donald Trump's claims that the 2020 election was stolen from him. DeSantis saying, quote, of course Trump lost in 2020 and that Joe Biden is the president. DeSantis is shifting his strategy after previously dodging questions about the validity of the 2020 election. CNN Steve Contorno is following this for us. So, uh, Steve, what else has DeSantis been saying? Omar, I have been covering Governor DeSantis going back to that uh, 2020 election, and I have never heard him say in such forceful terms that Trump lost the election. Uh, and he's been ducking and dodging this question for the better part of almost three years. But in an interview with NBC, he was asked point blank to, uh, about the 2020 election, and this is what he said. Yes or no, did Donald Trump lose the 2020 election? Whoever puts their hand on the Bible on January 20th every four years uh, is the winner. Okay, but respectfully, you did not clearly answer that question. And if you can't give a yes or no because on whether or not Trump lost, then how well, can of course, you... No, of, of course he lost. Uh, uh, Trump lost the 2020 of, election. Of course. Okay. Uh, Joe Biden's the president. Joe Biden is the president. That's the first time that he has so directly said that Trump lost and Joe Biden is the president. And it's not just that he has avoided this question. He has taken steps over the last two, two or three years to really embrace some of the more, more conspiratorial elements of his party. Uh, and immediately after the election, uh, he was one of the first to suggest that state election results could be overturned. Uh, he has uh, put uh, allies of those who believe that the election was stolen in his administration. And he has held me, had his staff have meetings with conspirators and overhauled Florida's voting laws uh, in many ways to appease these people who think that the election was stolen. So, yes, he's finally gotten to this point where he can say Trump lost, but it's been a long journey to get here. And it's coming at a point where clearly he is trying to change the nature of this race a little bit and start making headway into Donald Trump's lead, which looks like it's still strongly uh, in his favor going into these uh, early nominating states. Well, see, for someone who's covered uh, Governor DeSantis as, as long as you have to this point, if it's perked up your ears, then I know we're operating in the right space. Steve Contorno, Steve Contorno thank you so much. Kate? Let's talk more about this. Joining us now is White House Bureau Chief for The Washington Post, Tulu Olaranipa. Tulu, what's your take on this? I mean, Ron DeSantis saying reality is reality, that Donald Trump lost, but as, as Contorno is putting, pointing at, going, saying it more forcefully than he has in the past, what does this do for Ron DeSantis in this moment? Well, okay, this is the reset happening in the DeSantis campaign. We'll have to wait and wait a few weeks to see whether or not it moves any of the numbers, but he's clearly changing his strategy after more than two years of, you know, embracing the big lie, embracing the idea that the election was stolen or sort of uh, you know, paddling around the issue without actually talking about it. It's a clear distinction now in his new stage of this campaign where he's trying to take Trump on in a more direct way and also taking on some of his voters. This is not supposed to be a thing of, of, of courage to say what, what is true, but because Trump's voters are so aligned with the idea that the election was stolen, uh, DeSantis is actually potentially putting himself on the opposite side of them. And so he's going to have to be somewhat deft in trying to figure out how to say, yes, Trump lost, but also say that there are issues with the election because that's what a lot of Trump voters believe. And so that's what he's trying to do. That's what he tried to do in this interview. It's not yet clear whether or not he's been able to shift any of the numbers with this new stage of his campaign, but it's very clear that he's trying a new tactic. Even the fact that he was having an interview with NBC News is a clear signal that he's opening himself up to the mainstream media and being willing to try something different because what we've seen over the first couple of months of his campaign is what he was trying before was not working. Yeah, I mean, and I want to play something else that DeSantis said in this interview with NBC about the election. Listen to this, Tulu. If the election is a referendum on Joe Biden's policies and the failures that we've seen, and we are presenting a positive vision for the future, we will win the presidency uh, and we will have a chance to turn the country around. If, on the other hand, uh, the election is not about January 20th, 2025, but January 6th, 2021, or what document was left by the toilet at Mar-a-Lago. If it's a referendum on that, we are going to lose. I thought this was interesting. I mean, he does seem to be leaning, leaning into the, you know, the toilet at Mar-a-Lago comparison quite a bit here. But where does that 
Is it an, I mean, it's an un answerable question. Is this enough? Where does that leave him and his campaign right now? It's, it's a classic strategy to say, you know, it's a selection about the future and not the past when you're running against someone who's been president before. Right. It's not clear that that's going to work in this case because Trump's voters are so connected to him. They're so aligned with him. They're so loyal to uh, Trump and the Trump movement that just saying, you know, all of these past grievances do not help people going forward. It's not clear if that will work in a primary. Now, that, that may be something that will help win back some of the moderates and independents who have uh, already signed off from the Trump movement. But winning a primary is a different uh, strategy. And it's not clear that DeSantis has that strategy just yet. But it's clear that he's going to take Trump on in a more direct way. That's something a number of people have been calling for, because the idea of just sort of being on the same stage with Trump and being in the same uh, playing field with him and not really taking op opposing positions, that wasn't working. We've seen Trump's numbers go up as he's faced these various indictments. And we've seen DeSantis's number go down. And so for that reason, I think he's trying a new strategy and he wants to see whether or not it will give him some traction here in the summer before uh, the election really gets underway. And you mentioned more moderate voters because on the path forward for DeSantis, Reuters has some interesting reporting now that one of his one of uh, Ron DeSantis's biggest donors, hotel entrepreneur Robert Bigelow, is threatening to pull support or not give any more support if DeSantis doesn't start one attracting more big dollar donors and also if he doesn't start moving more moderate. This is what he told Reuters. He does he does need to shift to get moderates. He'll lose if he doesn't. Extremism isn't going to to get you elected, Bigelow said in an interview, adding that he had communicated these concerns to DeSantis's campaign. And I wonder how big of a problem this is for DeSantis, because as you're mentioning, you got to thread the needle here. You got to win a primary, which, as we know, oh, you know, as history tells us, especially recent history, you have to go more to the extremes to win the primary and then you can run in the, in the general. But I don't know. What does a more moderate move for Ron DeSantis look like now? It's very difficult. Most of the people who want an alternative to Donald Trump and the Republican Party are the moderate voters. They're not the extremer, extreme voters, voters, the people who ha had been with Trump from 2015 and 2016 and just sort of soured on him because he's been losing. I think DeSantis believed that because Trump you know, lost in 2020 and saw, uh, you know, losses in 2022 as well, that, you know, a lot of the people who were with him were going to look for an alternative and say, even if you're more like Trump, but you can show that you've won, then I will leave Trump for you. And we haven't seen that from a lot of the base mm -hmm. Trump voters. And so now a number of uh, a number of DeSantis's donors are saying, you need to appeal to some of these moderate voters some people that we need to win back into the party, because if you just uh, appeal to the right wing of our party, we're going to find ourselves in a situation that's similar to what we faced in 2020, where, you know, we have a, a high turnout, we have strong vote among the base, but we can't win over the college educated voters and the moderate voters. And for that reason, and Joe Biden uh, won his first term, and a number of people are saying that he'll, he will win a second term if uh, Republicans aren't able to win back some of those voters that decided that they were done with Trump after uh, 2020, and especially after the January 6th insurrection. Yeah, I mean, if it's not connecting, you got to make a shift as a, a reset, as we keep talking about with DeSantis. Let's see if it sticks. It's good to see you, Tulu. Please join the conversation. Put your comments and suggestions below in the comment section. Thank you for subscribing to this news channel. You will be notified of any breaking news and new post as you become part and parcel of the McCad TV family. Please like and share McCad TV. We love you all. Please support McCad TV Foundation by joining membership and visiting Amazon UK to purchase the displayed books to aid our orphanage projects across Africa.